say princesses like Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella and Diana. Wow, three fictional characters, uh, says Jimbo. Uh, somebody else says uh, someone's watched uh, too much Shrek. And, uh, and somebody else on Twitter says no gowns or jewels. There's going to be a lot of disappointed little girls. Uh, well, well. These are American girls who are flown from the United States to spend a week in London training to be a princess. Uh, they can well afford uh, the gowns and jewels, I would think. Uh, speaking of royalty, we have been joined here on the balcony by none other than uh, Italian royalty, Paolo Tullio is here. Paolo, good afternoon to you. Hello, Sean. Are you well today? I'm delighted to be sitting outside with you. This is just a terrific idea. It is a fantastic idea. Well, actually, the bit you're in is getting a bit of stone. The bit I'm in is... <laughs> it's not. It's more polar. Uh, <laughs> Uh, somebody had actually a question earlier on. If a restaurant is open tomorrow, yes. if you know the legal niceties of this, are you allowed to have a glass of wine? Do you know, I really have no idea. Um, it's not something that's ever troubled me one way or the other because there's enough food in my house for a good two or three weeks without going to go shopping. So it's good to be just prepared, one, just one, day, one day, one day isn't going to make much of a dent in it. No, I, I wouldn't have thought so. I would imagine though you could maybe bring your own bottle and then they haven't sold it to you. I'm sure, sure there are ways around it. There have to be. That's, uh, um, anyway, and I wonder if, day. yeah, if you're in a restaurant after midnight tonight, do they stop serving the drink? Theoretically, yes. Or are, you, are you required to stop drinking the drink? Do they whip it from your hand <laughs> once the gong goes? <laughs> yes, exactly. No, nope, sorry, start suffering. No, it's Good Friday. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, it. So, Texas says, I'm heading to the east of Sicily next week. Any tips on where or what to eat? Oh, there are lots of lovely things. Sicilians are particularly good at it. It's, um, they have an interesting cuisine because, I don't know, not to bore you too much of the long and detailed history of, of Sicily, but an awful lot of people have uh, gone and conquered Sicily, hmm. from starting with the Normans, oddly enough. Wow, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, they even got their luck Viking longboats got as far as Sicily, and King Roger the first <laughs> of, of Sicily was, in fact, a Norman. So there have been Normans, there have been French, there have been Arabs, there have been, God knows, Spanish have been there, and everybody's brought something to the Sicilian table. So it's got an interesting mix of stuff. It's quite spicy, it's got interesting flavours. Um, I was in the eastern side um, a few years back, and just the Tower of Mina, and uh, I went to a restaurant. Where the, well, there's the first time I ever ate oranges as a starter. They make an orange salad. And, wow. and, they, and they, they, with vinegar and, you know, some mm. vinegar and all of that, and it's absolutely delicious. The very famous things called arancini, which have been almost by the side of the road in some places, which are rice balls, but the complicated rice balls, and not the simple ones, which in turn is called soupli. These are much fancier things altogether, loads of taste in them, and they're coated with red rose, deep fried, and they're absolutely delicious. Uh, definitely a thing to go for. But, as I say, Sicilian cuisine is, is uh, very different from mainland Italian. Mm -hmm. A lot more interesting use of spices, um, probably a result of the Arab influence, uh, uh, much more so than the herbs that you would get used in the mainland in you know, Sicily, as well as spices. And by the way, when I was there, I asked, I asked this guy who runs a travel agency, I said, you, you, you get a lot of visitors here during the summer of tourists, and he said, oh yeah, we get a lot of Italians coming. <laughs> which I thought spoke volumes for the Sicilian mindset. Well, they, they do see themselves as a, as a race apart, really, don't they? Yes. Uh, and, and then the uh, Italians coming over there and taking, taking things over. That's very interesting then, because it, that doesn't actually, what you've described there, doesn't really sound that Italian at all. No, a lot of the things that they do, and I think, of course, pistachio mm. comes, the, the nuts are used in everything, from cakes, just, uh, they do a lot of sweet things. So, they really launched themselves into that whole Arab sweetmeats thing. Uh, so they do an awful lot of very sugary dessert, very sugary sweet, intensely sweet, almost too much for our taste, but that's one of the things I like. I'm sure you have a good time there. Best cannoli I ever had was in Sicily. Really? That's interesting. I mean, they are, they are theoretically uh, Neapolitan. Yeah. And, there you go. Theoretically. <laughs> uh, on that question of can you uh, have wine tomorrow in a restaurant, uh, Molly Kikenny says, uh, we bought our own wine to a restaurant last year. A guard out with passing the restaurant came in and gave out to us, then said if we kept the wine under the table and not in public view, we wouldn't complicate it. 
<laughs> what is very Irish solution. <laughs> 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 he say his mixed message was a bit confusing, uh, says Paulie. Uh, that's uh, not confusing at all. Uh, welcome to Ireland. Uh, uh, Lay, uh, Ray in Letterkenny says, uh, a hotel in Letterkenny was done last Good Friday for serving a glass of wine with a meal to a tourist from South America. The guy in the hotel thought he was a resident. The judge made him contribute a large fine to a local church. I think that law should be scrapped. Uh, Keith and Bray says, uh, where's the best restaurant in Rome? We're going there in two weeks. Uh, I think that's that one. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it again. They're not too far from Rome's main only railway station, the Termini, uh, the Via Gaeta, G-A-E-T-A. -E really nice little restaurant called La Familia, The Family. Cheap, good, friendly, and uh, you can sit outside and sit around if you want. It's a real Italian restaurant. Absolutely, it's really nice. I quite liked it. Because kind of, it, it, it's almost like sometimes in Italy there's it's like an Italian version of the Irish pop. It's kind of they've yeah. Italian it up for, it, for tourists. Absolutely. Well, this one is actually full of Italians. Uh, yes, it's it's a refreshing change. Uh, the food bin in uh, Santorini is great, and their local wines, especially white wine, are great. Yeah, they make a wonderful it's white wine. It's true. They do. Uh, Jeannie says, having lamb this Sunday, does Paolo have any suggestions for herbs or a gravy for it? Well, I'm particularly fond of, if I'm doing a roast leg of lamb, what I'll do is I use a sort of a sharp point knife, make little holes in it and put a small piece of garlic and a small piece of rosemary into each of them. Uh, and I've done that for years and I think that works really nice. I was watching Heston Blumenthal on an advert with some of the the other night, doing just that, but adding also a little piece of anchovy. Uh, which I haven't tried, but uh, I must say I'm quite happy with just the garlic and rosemary. Yeah, the garlic is, is lovely. Yeah. Well, it is, it is uh, very nice. Uh, yeah, I used to do that as well. And, 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 you know, you can get the jars of the lazy garlic in it. Wash it over the lazy garlic. Oh, very handy. Uh, lazy bit of garlic. Uh, the, uh, the missus brought home couscous. What does one do with this now? Do you think if I mashed up some potatoes with a stick, would she notice? Well, you know, making couscous slightly easier than boiling and mashing potatoes because all you have to do is pour boiling water on it. Um, that's as much cooking process. Yeah, that you have to do with it. I suppose the thing about couscous is this it, it doesn't taste of anything. It's I one of those kind of I think it's a base. You yeah. Know, you do something with it. Yeah. Uh, all by itself doesn't taste a great deal. Uh, many, many years ago when I was a young man, uh, I spent rather longer than I intended in Morocco. Mainly because I had all my money stolen at the end of the first week. So I was there for a bit longer than I intended. Uh, <laughs> there were two things that I had to eat a lot of. One was olives, and one was couscous, because it was cheap and that's all I could afford. Uh, and I didn't eat either olives or couscous for about 10 or 15 minutes after <laughs> the flashbacks. Quite, quite enough of it, thank you. But yeah, yeah you really have to combine the. Well, it's like, well, just like we do with mashed potato. I mean, with mashed potato, you put something in it, butter or mustard or cream, you mm -hmm. add something to it. Now, all by itself, it wouldn't be that great. No, it wouldn't be. Uh, I'm heading for a picnic this Saturday with a boyfriend. I want some interesting ideas for the basket, aside from the usual cocktail sausages and sandwiches. Yeah, Things you can take on a picnic. Well, make a nice Spanish omelette. Always a nice big, nice big thick omelette with potatoes and other and a whole well, you know, we'll survive a picnic basket very nicely. And a, a picnic is a, and you talked about it before, the picnics in Italy are... Yeah, no, well, picnics in Italy are, are just simply a means of doing what you would normally do at home, and some. Yes. So it means you have to take tables, chairs, gas cookers, bottles of gas, uh, <laughs> large pots, you fill with water to boil the pasta, uh, you cook the meat, um, you do everything like you would at home, except you do it outside. I grew up in England where